Hello, hello. Good evening and welcome to Sunday Night Satsang with John and... Yeah, Michelle. Hello there. Hello. We have a different background tonight because we're in a different place. We've taken some soul time. And, yeah, uh, indeed. Yeah, we have. In the beautiful garden route. We have. <laughs> we're in the garden route, which is uh, a beautiful part of the country in South Africa. Really, really is beautiful. So welcome to those who are joining us. Let us know where you're from. Let us know how you are tonight. And we love getting the hearts. We always love getting the hearts. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. How, how was your Sunday today? Hopefully you had some soul time, some restful time. Mm. Yeah, we certainly did. We'll talk a bit about that uh, during the during the satsang. And how's the beautiful rain that we had for those in uh, down this part of the world? Had some beautiful rain. rain. I think, yeah, I think Cape really Town also did. We're not there. Yep. That's right, yeah. So, hello. Thanks for hello. the hearts. Hi, hello, Claire. Claire. Hi, Claire. A regular Claire. Let all us the way know from who's Zim. here. Yeah. Lovely yeah. to know who we're talking to because we just see ourselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we love to, to know who we're talking to and where you're from. And uh, we're just going to wait for a few more people to join before we we start. Yeah, so we, we are um, on a lovely place called, what's it called? East of... Uh, Eden's Touch. Eden's Touch. Eden's Touch. That's mm. right. Beautiful. And uh, it's it's a guest farm in the in the garden route, a beautiful part of uh, the garden route, and it's just so peaceful and quiet here. Very very quiet. We're lucky we've got uh, internet connection. We are. Hopefully yeah. it'll last. If we disappear, then you know why. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hopefully we don't disappear. But uh, on cold. on the uh, on the live that I did earlier to to promote tonight's uh, satsang. I see I disappeared a few times. Obviously, the signal was dropping. So if we do drop, just bear with us. Stay and we'll here come back. and we'll, we'll come back. Yeah, it's one of the joys of being out in the country. Hi, Hi Sonia. Yeah. Yeah, good to have you with us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's cold. Like Sonia said it's cold. It is. Hello, yeah. Claire. It is quite cool. It yeah. is quite cool. So welcome. Soon. Yeah, let's do the most important part of the whole evening and that's bring ourselves into the present moment. And I'm sure we've had lots of activity today, maybe, and lots of stories going on. And uh, let's just withdraw ourselves, our conscious awareness from the matrix, from the story, and become fully present in this here, this beautiful, wonderful, unique moment here and now. Let's just gently, you might like to close your eyes. You can do this open as open eyes as well, but sometimes it's good to withdraw your vision from your surrounding environment and just center on the physical body. The physical body is such a wonderful, powerful tool into the, uh, what I call the vertical plane, into the power of presence. So close your eyes and just focus for a few moments on what it feels like to be here alive in this moment, right now, alive. So check in with your body and see if you are alive. Just check that you can uh, feel your toes and your hands and your fingers. To see if you can feel the temperature of the room on your cheeks. And bring your awareness into your hands. And you might like to hold them slightly apart. Palms facing each other. And very gently Move your hands slightly in and slightly out with awareness. And see if you can pick up some sort of energy between your hands. Maybe you feel it as a bit of resistance. Maybe you feel it as a warmth. Some people feel it as a rubber ball between their hands. So just move your hands gently in and out a little bit, just a tiny bit of fraction. And just see if you can pick up any resistance in the energy field. You have to become fully present to do this exercise. Just do that for a moment. And then you can take this ball of energy between your hands and just place them on your chest and bring this energy into your hearts. This chi, this chi ball. And now move your hands out 
and release this energy to the world. Send this energy from yourself consciously to all those who are in need right now in this moment of healing, of love, of connection. There may be someone in your awareness who is lonely, someone who maybe is suffering. Bring them into your awareness. But at the same time, embrace the greater humanity. And do it with an awareness of not trying to fix anything or anyone, but just allowing this energy, this chi energy, to do the work, to do the healing, to do the comforting. In the Tao Te Ching, an ancient book from China, it says the Tao does nothing but leaves nothing undone. This energy, this chi energy, works very mysteriously. Without doing it, achieves the miraculous. So you don't have to do anything in this moment, but be a channel for this chi energy to come through you, through your heart, through your hands, into this plane of existence. holding the world in a beautiful bubble of light in this moment. And this light is real, this energy, this intention has a profound effect in the material plane. We know how many experiments that have been done that transformation takes place when we focus energy in this way. And as you focus the intention of healing, of bringing comfort and light. Feel your feet on the floor and feel an energy coming up your feet and up your legs from Mother Earth. And at the same time, as you draw the energy up from Mother Gaia, bring the energy, just in your imagination if you wish, from Father Sky down you, into your heart. So you're drawing the energy up from Mother Earth into your heart. And drawing the energy down from Father Sky into your heart. And then projecting it out into the world. And see if you can feel any tingling in your hands right now. You're a conduit for higher awareness to come into this plane. You're a channel. You're a hole in the flute through which Love enters this plane. And now, take a very deep breath in. And as you breathe in, you blow your tummy out. So you're drawing the air right the way down to your lower diaphragm. And as you breathe out, you release any thoughts, any worries, any concerns. You breathe in again, very deeply into your body, drawing this beautiful breath of life into your body. And as you breathe out once more, you surrender to the will of life. Not my will, but thy will be done. Take a third, very deep breath into your body, drawing the air right the way down. And you might like to physically sigh it out, make a noise as you sigh it out. And as you sigh, just sink down deeper into your body. Become more connected with your physical body. Now in this moment, send the most powerful prayer out into the universe. And it's a prayer of just two words. Thank you. Just an expression of gratitude for this moment, for being this channel 
for this life and this love and this light to come into this plane more fully through you. Just thank you. That prayer opens up the heart even more to the power of gratitude. Very high frequency. Just thank you. Feel this thank you with every cell in your body. Just thank you. This moment is beautiful. Thank you. This moment is sacred. This moment is precious. Thank you. Now I'll take a soft breath in. A long breath out. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes. And as you open your eyes, keep a certain amount of your awareness in the body, in this present moment. Keep your body awareness alive as we go through this satsang tonight because the body is such a powerful portal into life. It is alive and it's our mind that disconnects from this energy of life. And let us know in the comments how you're feeling now. You're feeling a bit more centered, a bit more peaceful, a bit more still. Let us know how you are. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you, John. Good. How are you feeling? Calmer. Calmer. Mm. That's good. Not that I wasn't calm, because we had a calm day. <laughs> we had a very calm day. <laughs> we've, had a, we've had a weekend away from computers and loud things. Yeah, so we decided to take a complete day off today, and we've just been walking in the forest and wandering around, and just, we've had, uh, yeah. yeah, it's been beautiful, hasn't Soul it? Soul time. Soul time today. So we yeah. didn't even really have a proper theme for tonight, we just thought, you know, we chat about soul time. Yeah, yeah. And I the did. importance of it. To recharge. In our own lives. Anything from an astrological point of view? I haven't even looked. Oh, you haven't looked? No, Good. I have okay. not. <laughs> well, the sun came up today. The sun came up today. Which was pretty and the moon's good. been in the sky. Yeah, we saw the moon as well. And we know that it's, everything's happening the way it should. It is. Everything unfolds as it should, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so we, we, we spend the day connecting uh, with Mother Earth, with nature. We, as we said in the beginning, maybe some of you missed it, we, we were away in the garden route. And it's a very rich environment. There's so much, um, there's so much life here. Uh, beautiful trees, beautiful indigenous forests and rivers. Bird life is amazing, truly amazing. It's so much green. There's uh, so much green, yeah, which is so healing. Green is the color of life. And healing. And so we, we chose today just to immerse ourselves in this beautiful, beautiful energy of presence, of life. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really just brought into our awareness the importance of spending time, soul time, connecting with nature, connecting with life, connecting with presence. We get so caught up in the in the mundane life, you know, the to-do lists of life. And the old traditional way was, you know, the Sabbath was uh, sacred. And I remember growing up, all the because shops closed, closed. On, a, on, a, on a Saturday lunchtime. Now, I know traditionally, or in fact, the Sabbath is a Saturday, but we've put it into Sunday. But um, Saturday afternoon and Sundays were very quiet days growing up, mm. very, very still days. And yet the world that we live in today has basically wiped that out. And we have a seven-day um, yeah. economical, what's it called? It, a commerce. Yeah, and then commerce. also these... these Social media and cell phones and stuff. So you never really switch off unless you consciously switch off. I think it's very different. You know, in the old days, <laughs> we're showing our age, but, you know, if you went off on a Friday afternoon, yeah, that was, was no, you for yeah. the afternoon. No one could the, get hold of you. Yeah. There was no way that anyone could get hold of you. If you went away, absolutely no one could get hold of you. So, I mean, I used to do that regularly when I was mm. in the corporate world. I'd, I would switch the, my landline, I'd unplug it and I would completely check out for yeah. the weekend and I would yeah. recharge so that I could actually re-engage on Monday. Yeah. And I think that with mm -hmm. um, the advent of all our digital stuff, I think that's changed and it's we, changing more and more. And we need, we need, you know, these cycles, everything works in cycles mm -hmm. and we need the, the seven-day cycle 
And, you know, I don't think it particularly matters whether you take Saturday as a Sabbath or Sunday as a Sabbath. But take at least one day to feed your soul. And to be quiet, to be quiet, yeah. to be still, not to get involved with activities. I mean, so many people use the weekend. Yeah, it is. I mean, sport is important and physical recreation mm -hmm. is important. But take some soul time just to be quiet and to be still and to recharge. It, it, it's to reconnect with life. That's really what what is about. I mean, what is the one thing we want more than anything else? It's surely to feel alive. It's to be connected to to life as it is in this present moment. Mm -hmm. And that's a goal that many people set for themselves for some future time. I'm going to be alive when I go on holiday. But you're yeah. alive now. You're alive in this moment. And it's to honor, it's to honor yourself enough to spend a little bit of quiet time, particularly connecting with the stillness of nature, with the quietness of nature. Yeah, and then to intersperse that into your day as well, into the busy work week, the busy work day. You know, many of your parents, which is demanding, and to actually have time where you just sit for five minutes with a cup of tea or look outside and interact with a bird or a flower or the earth or lie on the grass. And we get so caught up, and I think it's because very often we don't believe we deserve it. Mm, we feel that right. we've got to be pushing, you know, to the next thing and to the next thing. And until we become aware of that, we will continue just to do that. Mm. And then to sort of, you know, thank God it's Friday. Um, please, God, let the weekend come. You know? So what are we doing? We are We're just life. whittling away mm. our lives. So I, I just think it's a really important... I, I often tell the story of... Um, I went to see a woman, she's, a, she's an astrologer, we were studying astrology, and she looked towards me, so those of you who have heard this, you will have heard it, but she looked at me and she said, how much time do you dedicate to your soul? And at the time I was very busy, I was, I mean I was trying to earn a living, I was studying astrology, and I had new partnerships, and all sorts of things was happening, and I said, well, you know, and I related all my busyness to her. And all the reasons why I didn't even really know what she was talking about. And she leaned forward and she said, You don't have time for your soul? Then what are you doing here on the planet? <laughs> yeah. And it really struck me. And sometimes I remember her words. Because we, we don't even know how we're actually projecting into the future. We're doing... You know, we're brushing our teeth so that we can get that finished so we can move on to the next thing. And then we're sending this email so that we can get off that and then phone the next person. Or we're cooking supper so we can rest. Or um, instead of just being um, and interspersing our lives with being. So I often think of that woman and yeah. I thank her for it because yeah. that was 20 years ago. Yeah. And her words still, still ring in my ears when I'm running from, the ne from one thing to the next. And this last few days, it's just it's highlighted that. Thing. Yeah, soul food. Being quiet is soul, soul food. food. And don't wait for Sunday when, before you start connecting with life. Do it now. Do it in each and every moment. So as Michelle said, if you're cleaning your teeth, just be there cleaning your teeth. If you're making supper, just be there making supper. Just be, if, you, if you're with your child, just be there with your child. No agenda, no outcome, no future. Just be there with them in this moment. The most precious thing you can ever give your children, for example, is your presence. Not a present, not a piece of plastic or whatever. No, your presence. And, and your partners too. With friends. And your partners. I mean, yes. so many relationships um, dissolve because there's no presence. There's no time spent together in st sacred stillness, just communing. And that's where, where, for example, connecting in nature is so powerful. Just to go and sit on a rock or sit under a tree or sit on the beach and just be, just be with no agenda, no no need to solve a problem, no need to get information or guidance, just to be, just mm -hmm. to absolutely be in that moment. Yeah, it's such a connecting thing as well. We went for a walk on Friday in a beautiful forest here. I mean, it's just one of the most magnificent forests I've ever been in. And we met a friend of ours who we'd met before online, but we'd never met her in person and it was the most extraordinary walk i mean 
you know, once we had sort of got the talking out the way, which took about five minutes, we then walked and were in presence for a lot of the time. And it was so incredible that we, um, it was a sort of a circular walk. Um, and we stopped and talked a bit and then we walked. It was just very, very, we were all kind of quite still. And we came across, we, we sat for a while to talk and this troop of baboons um, came to us. We didn't have any food. They just emerged, they out, just of the, emerged. out of the, out of the, out of the thick it forest. It was the most incredible yeah. thing. I felt like we were in Zaire with the gorillas. <laughs> of the it was rather and like they, they, they were, they, there were a lot of them and there were little ones and big ones and we had a beautiful interaction with them there. And then we thought, okay, well that's that, beautiful, and we, we, we walked on. And then as we were walking around the circle, they appeared again. And I tell you what, we must have spent an hour, maybe mm. more, with them. And mm. they came from all over the forest. Mm. There must have been 50, I don't know how many of them were, were there. Mm. And they were curious. And they were sitting in front of us, just being still, just sitting. And they were, so, some of them were a meter away from us. They're not mm. trying to encroach on us. But they were looking at us and I was having an interaction with a little, tiny little one who was kind of playing hide and go seek. And I, I would do this and he would do this and then we would bounce around. The most incredible experience, and I've had a lot of experiences in the bush, but that was, yeah, it was really beautiful. absolutely magical. And then we would, we would sort of start walking because now, we, you know, eventually we, we need to walk through them. And there were baboons in front of our path. And we started walking towards them and they sort of just sat there and then they eventually sort of moved away. And then we would look behind us and they would all be following us. But as soon as they saw us follow, looking behind us, they would sit down as if to say, no, we're not following you. Not, not only would they sit down, <laughs> they, would, they would lie on their backs and they'd start looking for fleas and they'd, they'd yeah. pretend that they're so they'd, chilled out. Totally. But the moment we started walking on again, they'd all jump up and follow us again. <laughs> and then we stopped, stop, turn around and they just pretend, no, we're not following you, we're just chilling here. Oh, it was so funny. It really was so beautiful. And it was because we were so still inside yeah. ourselves that we allowed the stillness in nature to come to us. And it really was a beautiful, very sacred experience to connect with nature in that way. I, there, there was a there was a laughter in their eyes. There was there was. was a there was something really beautiful in that interaction, which went on for for, for quite a long time, as Michelle <laughs> said. And that was uh, that was because we were immersed in in this sacred stillness, I, I believe. And it's really important for us to nourish our own souls in that way, because when we become still, then we connect with the true source of life itself. Um, and instead of chasing life, allow life to come to you. And you have to, I believe, open yourself up and allow that, 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 that essence, that sacred essence of being to come through you. So that wonderful uh, poem from Rumi, I am a hole in the flute mm. that the Christ breath blows through. Listen to my music. And, and my music then is an expression of life living you, living through you. Now, many people think they have a life. And I say, no, you haven't got a life. Life has you. Life lives you, mm. lives through you. And there's a very different way of, of, um, of living your life, and it's, it's far more enjoyable. Mm. And the interesting thing also about that encounter with them and our, our sort of uh, connection was that our connection with us and with this friend of ours just deepened and deepened and deepened as we walked through the forest. So we, we really did feel drawn to trees and we were sitting with the trees and this beautiful big tree. I mean, it's, I think it's the largest tree I've ever seen. And the, the, the power of nature when you just, you're still enough to be with it and to see that you're not separate. We are not separate. We're not separate from each other and we're not separate from nature. And that was why we had this incredible, incredible journey. And it's right there. It's always available, but we're usually too busy to see it. Yeah, even and if we're you... busy walking, and we've got to get to the end, mm. you know, because there's time. <laughs> we were, I mean, we were going to meet someone before, and we landed up being three hours late because you know we didn't, we hadn't made a definite agreement. We said, well, we just got, you know, we got forest lost, forest, 
Um, so that's soul time. That's complete soul time where you lose you lose time. Or well, time it becomes irrelevant. Time becomes Ill- yeah. irrelevant. You think of how we live our lives according to the clock, yeah. according to the thing called time, and and for what purpose? For what purpose? Yeah. Think about you know, maybe five or ten years ago, or even twenty years ago, depending on how old you are. Think about when you were very, very stressed in a particular situation and time was just of the essence in that moment. And with the wisdom of hindsight, you're looking back and you say, what was it all for? Why was I so stressed? Why was there such a need to get mm-hmm. somewhere else other than where you are? And stress, the definition of stress is, is you, you are mm-hmm. being here, but thinking you mm-hmm. ought to be over there or wanting to be over there. This is where you are. And when you connect with nature, as we have been particularly today and, and on Friday as well, when you connect with nature in, in that way, you, you look at nature and you realize that nature is not stressing. Nature is not trying to get somewhere else. I mean, those, yes. those, those baboons were just so chilled. They weren't trying to get anywhere else. They were just immersed in life and the joy of this particular moment, this this unique interaction that they were having with us, mm. uh, which was a very, very sacred interaction, I, I, mm. I must say. Yeah, it was really, really beautiful. And I believe life is not a, a race to get somewhere. It's not about a destination. Life, the journey it's of not. the human is not a, a destination. It's an experience. And to have the depth of the experience, you have to be present. And so it's to, to invite that presence into each and every moment of our life. That, that's the important part, because the other part of what we wanted to look at tonight was, was being centered, being present, being centered in the storm of life. I mean, there is, there is so much change taking place on planet mm-hmm. Earth at the moment, and I'm sure you feel it energetically in your own lives. You know, relationships are changing, mm-hmm. careers are changing, um, the political scene, etc., is all changing. And it's to find that centeredness, that you know, say the eye of the storm is still. In the middle of the storm, there's always that stillness. And we get caught up in the whirlwind of life and circumstances, particularly those of you who still watch the media. You get caught up in, in what they're selling, which is generally fear and uncertainty. Mm-hmm. And it's really important to take some time out to center yourselves, connect with nature, connect with the stillness of your own being. And that will give you the inner resilience to deal with whatever challenges mm-hmm. come your way. It's really important to, to do that, to remain sane in these times of insanity. And I think it's even more, possibly even more prevalent now with um, you know, the way the world is going in terms of the digital side of things, artificial intelligence. We all know that that's on its way. It's like a runaway train. Um, and how much we engage with that, you know, um, we all, we all, it's necessary for most of us to engage with digital everything. But how much do we do it, you know? A friend of mine sent me a, a documentary on social media and, you know, there are many, many thousands, probably millions of people who live their lives through platforms like this and Instagram and that kind of thing where what they're putting out is not real at all on any level. Because it's all false. It's all, um, it, it's almost like, it's almost robotic, you know. So when you look at the filters that people are using and, um, you know, they make you look 20 years younger. Um, and then there's all sorts of filters that make a picture look even better. And then you've got these women and these people who put, you know, put their, their entire family and everything on all the time throughout the day what is real then what is real what's authentic and i think that this is what we are faced with as a humanity is is uh, connecting with our humanity connecting with our humanness yes we're spiritual beings having a human experience so to connect with and enjoy and nourish the human side of life um, without becoming robotic and I think there's a real danger of exactly that, of actually get, getting so caught up in the world of um, the digital, in the internet of things, 
that we lose touch with what's right here. You know. Yeah, you know, you know, Musk was talking about yeah. AI being a runaway train with mm -hmm. absolutely no constraints, no regulation yeah. at all. Um, you know, he's a man of, uh, you know, mm. contrast. contrast. Yeah, he really is, yeah. because on the one side he's participating fully in it, on the yeah, other side he's, he's saying, saying it's probably the worst thing that we're ever going to mm. experience is this mm. digital takeover of our lives. But it's for us, each one of us, each to one. vote, to vote for the world that we want. And, I, you know, AI is, mm. yeah, it can be useful, it can be helpful, but it is not reality. It never is mm. reality. And it's for us to vote with our awareness and with, with whatever we focus our energy on. And, for example, I'm coming back to the theme for tonight, which is reconnecting with, with the soul. Yeah. Um, AI does not have soul. AI yeah. is, is it, it, I mean, it can mimic creativity, for example. It cannot have any real creative energy. Cre creative energy comes from your soul. Mm -hmm. And so it's to spend some time in creativity, spend some time in connecting, disconnecting from the digital world and connecting mm -hmm. with life as it is in this moment. And, you know, Michelle mentioned earlier the color of life in this particular part of the world is, is green. green. You know, it's connect everywhere. with green, connect with green, something that's living and is alive, not the plastic nature. I mean, you know, you're talking about Instagram and there are so many people who have these artificial profiles, artificial faces. I mean, people go, for Botox and all, everything's artificial to make you seem a certain way, but it's veneer, it's surface, it's not soul, and that will never nourish who you really are. And there's a great propensity today in the world to 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 lean on chemicals, for example, for your fulfillment, because that plastic world mm -hmm. doesn't meet your real needs. So people reach for the caffeine or the nicotine or the alcohol or the Prozac. They reach for those to try and fill up that, that, that gaping hole in their lives. When in fact, lying on grass, um, sitting by a little stream, <laughs> listening to That's birds, true. you know, that is where the real Prozac lies. Not in a bottle or in a cigarette. And it's like a tranquilizer. I mean, when I come out of the mm. forest, I feel completely yeah. chilled, chilled. I mean, it's better than any, any fake yeah. tranquilizer. Yeah. Um, but it's also quite interesting because the social media thing um, does actually adjust chemicals in our bodies. So the reason it's dopamine, it's a dopamine mm. hit. So when you know people that are very involved with it are getting a dopamine hit when they get a like, or when they get ten people, or when they get a hundred people, and they get fifty thousand people, they're getting dopamine hits. So there's a there's a reason why they're doing it. But it's not real. Mm. So it's, I think it's just very important that we're aware of it so that mm. we can see it because we're all involved in it, but that we can see that it needs to be um, balanced. Yeah. We need to find balance. And that's what this is really where we were talking about is the, the, the absolute essential um, balance that we need this soul, this soul time. Connecting your feet to the earth directly, Absolutely. disconnecting from the digital yeah. world. This runaway train is, is very, very real, this AI. And if you look at the way, for example, we have Facebook morphing into this metaverse. And uh, I mean, where that's headed with um, your avatars and, mm -hmm. and, and, and it'll be avatars interacting with other avatars. And yeah, you can get the experience sort of an, on a superficial area of incredible things in that realm, but you can't connect with your soul. It is a soulless environment. It lacks humanity. It lacks empathy. It lacks compassion. You cannot feel compassion in that world. And that is a dehumanizing world. That's the direction that that world is wanting humanity to go. It's almost like a vampire sucking the life out of us. And I believe that each one of us have a duty not only to ourselves and for our own enjoyment of life, but also to to those that come after us, our children and our grandchildren, to choose more wisely right now which path you want to follow. Get into nature, become real, connect with human beings in a real way, disconnect and, and have a, a day where you do not go onto social media, where you do not connect with the internet at all. 
have that detox time so that you to see if you are addicted to your phones. I mean, how many times a day do you look at your phone? How many times a minute do you look at your phone? Disconnect from that. Put the phone off. Disconnect. Take the family. Go into into nature. Don't don't you know? Particularly, you know, children should not have cell phones. That's my personal view. But disconnect as a family. Go into spend family time because this digital world is anti-family. It's anti that connection, anti-community. So take the time, disconnect from the digital and reconnect with the real world, which is about sharing heart to heart. It's about soul time with those that you love. Yeah, it's about creativity. It's about playing a musical instrument, singing, dancing, listening to music, <laughs> painting, sculpting. Um, you know, those things it's all bring us bring us back. They bring us, we were saying in the forest, it's, it, it brings you home. And okay, we haven't all got forests all the time to go and walk in, but we do have the opportunity of going and just being present, looking at a flower, looking at a piece of grass, sitting next to a tree. If we, if, you know, a pot plant, if you don't have a tree, that those, if you can do it wherever you are. We, I mean, we last last month we had the theme uh, beauty on our inner space community, and it was beautiful because everybody on the on the inner space community was looking for beauty. So wherever you were, so even when I was in a sort of a, a noisy, horrible, grubby, sort of built up environment, it was looking for that little bit of beauty, that little plant that was poking its head up against up through the concrete, you know, the little bits of beauty that you see. If you look for beauty, you'll find it. But most of the time, we're not looking because we're running to the next thing. Yeah, the, the, next the, thing. The, the, mind, the mind itself tends to look for what is wrong. It looks for danger, for example. It looks for, mm. you know, the stuff to be weary of. And that puts you into a state of stress. But when, you know, when you're able to give up that mind for a short while... And just connect with the stillness of life in this moment. Then you start to see the beauty. The beauty is there all the time, but it becomes, it sort of flowers into your awareness. In fact, this process that we're going through as a species has been called the flowering mm -hmm. of human consciousness. That's really what it, what, what it is. And there's nothing like nature to allow beauty to um, flower into your awareness um, more than anything else. Man-made, yeah, there is beauty in, in the stuff that man makes, but there's infinitely more beaut beauty in what nature makes. And just touching on, on, on you know, what people do with, with social media to make themselves look younger and smoother and whatever, uh, there is there's so much beauty in being natural, in being a natural human being. And no matter how old you are, just admire the expression of nature through your physical form in that moment. Why don't you try and be something that you're not? Why don't you honor the beauty that nature is expressing through your physical form in this moment? Look at that that, that way. Yeah. When you walk, we, we've mentioned this before, when you walk in nature and you look at, for example, uh, with these beautiful old trees and the trunks and the different formations yeah. that they have, it's so beautiful. A sapling is absolutely boring by comparison to an old, twisted, gnarled, gnarled tree. tree. You know, it's far more interesting. And yet we've been programmed to want this plastic smoothness in the human form. No, Especially start now. to admire the richness of life in you, the richness of life in your body. Look at your hands. See the richness. If there's these scars and, and little whatever there are, Look at it as a richness, not as a wrongness, which is what yes. we've been programmed to believe, to disconnect from, from the true process of, of life and the evolution of life, which is what yeah. AI is pushing us towards, a more and more artificial environment. And to be wary of that, again, that artificial environment does not nourish your soul. It nourishes maybe the mind in a hypnotized sort of way, but it doesn't hip, it doesn't nourish the soul who you really are well, it's to make friends with with who you are now the age that you are 
you know, if you get to an older age, it's a privilege. It's not a terrible thing, but it's often seen as, oh, shame, she's old, you know, shame, she's getting wrinkles. Yes, you do get wrinkles when you get old. Your face does melt a little bit. You do might maybe get grey hair, and so what? Can we just embrace it, as opposed to seeing that there's something wrong with us? Because we live in a society that celebrates youth. And it's gone beyond it now. It's not celebrating youth. It's now trying to make yourself youthful again. And in so doing, sometimes changing your face completely. Um, and when a wrinkle appears, you've got to get rid of it at all costs. Or put a filter on. Or put makeup on to try and cover it up. And there's nothing wrong with makeup. There's nothing wrong with, with creams. There's nothing wrong with any of that. But... There's also something to be said to just being okay with where you're at and what you look at, look like now. And you don't see that when you're younger because you don't for a minute believe that you're going to get older. So you, in, in youth, when you're very young, it's not something, it's not a consideration. You see older people and they're getting older. But when you get older, you have to make friends with it. You have to look in the mirror and actually make friends with what you see. But because it's not only about getting yourself. older. You know, I, I know, oh, and, I know, and, I know, yeah. eighteen-year-olds yes. who are not happy with their looks. They they want to look something, and they put these plastic filters on themselves mm. to to, to look smoother. It's true. You know, I, I remember even turning um, through friends when they turned thirty. Mm. When when we mm. were in our twenties, you know, thirty was old age. It was terrible at thirty. And now you get to, and you realize, you know, from our perspective, a 30 year old is still a child, you know. I mean, my daughter now, she's, she's just in her early 40s, and she's still a child, you know. And yet, when you're 30, if you think of a 40 year old, it's like old age, it's terrible. And it's really a matter of perspective. Just, you know, my suggestion is to really celebrate whatever age you are and celebrate the life that's living through your unique physical form in this moment it's real celebrate the life within you don't wish it to, to be somewhere else don't wish yourself to be somewhere else just celebrate this uniqueness in the moment the same way that you would celebrate the bark of an of a tree or the trunk of a tree you celebrate the uniqueness in life you know when we're in nature i mean part of the beauty of walking in nature is your critical mind switches off you don't judge a leaf yeah. as wrong you don't judge a flower as ugly. You just accept the beauty, the uniqueness of this particular aspect of nature in that moment. And to turn that around and see it in yourself, to admire that uniqueness that is life expressing itself in this unique form that you would classify as your body in this particular moment and to celebrate that. And that does something inside you. It feeds, it nourishes your soul when you when you do that and in order to in order to um, perceive beauty whether it's in nature or yourself or in another you have to be present you cannot perceive beauty if you're not present and so part of this process of awakening is to start to be more present so that you can can ex experience the magic of life in its beauty and its uniqueness just in this moment, here and now. That is awakening. It's, it's a realization of life. That's really what awakening is about. Yeah. yeah, and I think as we move into this next month, I mean, astrologically moving to the sign of cancer, the sun's moving to the sign of cancer. It's about nurturing and nourishing. So can we nurture and nourish this moment? Can, we nurture, can you nurture and nourish you at the point that you are? Can you nurture and nourish every, the people around you in acceptance of who they are, like you would a flower, like you would a tree, like you would a plant? It's nourishing. And, and this is the time of the year to nourish, to nurture. And that, that means to slow down. Because mm. you can't do it when you're, when you're running. <laughs> you're not nurturing. Nurturing is slow. It's pouring water onto a plant. It's, it's nurturing. It's tending something. Can we tend our lives like we would tend a flower, a plant, a loved one that we love? So that's our theme. Yeah. And on, on Inner Space, the Inner Space platform, and I know quite a few of you mm -hmm. are on the Inner Space platform, which is our, uh, our community, 
online community. The theme this month is is deep listening, mm -hmm. deep listening. And for example, when you connect to nature and you're sitting in nature, there's this, you know, you, you open your awareness up to the incredible richness of sounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, I recorded, yeah. you know, being in the forest, it's just the richness of sound is, is so beautiful, so magnificent. And when you when you are still enough inside to listen, that's when you are actually feeding your soul in that moment. And for example, if you want to create a better relationship with you and your with your intimate other, that's the way. spend some time in deep listening. Now, deep listening mm -hmm. is not about communicating anything. You're just sitting in the sacred essence of presence, mm -hmm. and that deep listening opens up. A, a, a magical energy between uh, the two of you. So deep listening is such a powerful way of feeding the soul and becoming centered because you cannot listen if you're not present. If you're not centered, you, you cannot listen. What you're doing is you are, are anticipating or processing information through the mind. Mm -hmm. But deep listening is to perceive life exactly as it is in this moment with an openness, to be completely open in this moment. So that, that theme for those of you who are on the Inner Space uh, group, it's a beautiful time to do this deep listening because that is soul food. It is. It is. It takes you straight in. brings you home. Listening is a very, very powerful portal. Very powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the last month was, was beauty and, and that links into, into, into deep listening. The two of them work very, very well together to create that, that that opening in your awareness, as I said, to allow that life to flow through your awareness into the world around you, because people will feel that mm -hmm. energy coming from you. When you walk into an environment, if you are centered, and if you are in that state of presence, you automatically initiate a, a process of enrichment in their lives, of healing in, in other people's lives as well. Now, I remember attending a, 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 a healing workshop many, many years ago, and, you know, they were showing you this techniques, but ultimately they said it's not about technique, it's about you showing up fully present for your, your, your client Absolutely. or for your patient. Presence is the, is, is the healer, mm -hmm. not the technique that you're doing. It's to be yeah. present with whoever you are with, because that's where the transformation takes place. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, that is such a soul enriching, um, process is just to be. Just to be. Instead of chasing time, chasing future, just to be. Mm. Yeah, and that the, the 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 beauty from last month, the listening from this month now leads into into nurturing from month of July. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be focusing yes. on in July. Yeah. Nurturing. How do we nurture ourselves mm. and others? What is nurturing? I often ask clients what is how they nurture themselves and they look at me in a confused way. Because what is it? Mm. We've got so far away from it, so many people. Yeah, maybe it's cooking a beautiful meal and eating it together, you know, without rushing. It's just slowing down. The slowing down is definitely a part of it. It is, yeah. So I'm going to lead, lead everybody out. Yes, yes. Do a little bit of centering meditation. We've got a lovely affirmation for you. You want to work that into the uh -huh. meditation? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And leave my writing. Uh -huh. Yeah, we didn't bring the cards. So. I'm, I'm left-handed. My writing is terrible. I should have been a doctor. Uh, can we read it for you? No, I can read it. You can read it. Okay, okay good. Okay. All right. Let's settle down. I hope I can, you can hear me. I'm a bit far away. All right. Let's just take a deep breath in. And a releasing, relaxing breath out. And another slow, long, deep breath in. All the way in. Hold for a moment and then release. Release. Deep. And a third slow, long breath in. And then a relaxing, releasing breath out as you drop your shoulders. And allow a wave of softness to just move through your body. 
connecting with the sounds that you can hear in this moment. Full awareness on the sounds. Deep listening. Extend your hearing out a little bit further. And breathe. Bring your attention to that breath as it comes in through your nose, fills up your body with air and then leaves your body. Feel the temperature of the breath as it enters and exits. Now connect with your hands. Just your hands, focus on your hands. And bring awareness to the energy that you might be able to feel in your hands as you focus your attention just on your hands. You might feel a little tingle or a little bit of a warmth. Just feeling how your body starts to relax. The relief of just being here now, not trying to get anywhere, not trying to achieve anything, just being. Now, in your imagination, I'd like you to imagine yourself walking along a path. It's a dirt path. The beautiful sun is gently caressing your skin. And you walk towards a forest. And as you enter that forest, The greenness embraces you. Surrounding you in all directions is nature at her finest. Every shade of green that you could imagine. The light filtering in through the canopy, lighting up the leaves like millions of little lights, maybe some dew glistening in the sunlight. As you walk further into this forest, you connect with the trees around you. Beautiful giants that may have been there for hundreds of years. They may have survived fires and storms and hurricanes still standing. And you find a tree maybe next to some water. And you lean against that tree. Allow that tree to just hold you and nurture you. Feel yourself sinking into a state of total oneness and relaxation. So much you almost you almost one with this tree. You can feel the tree's roots going deep, 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 deep into Mother Earth. And you can feel the energy of this trunk of this tree behind you or in front of you, reaching up 
and then branching up into the sky. The leaves, the berries, the flowers, which are home to beautiful birds and animal life. Feel yourself being warmed and supported in the embrace of this beautiful being. This being that is not separate to you. This being that is one with you. And as you allow yourself to be nurtured and held and supported, Imagine what you could hear in this forest. Look around you, pick something up from where you're sitting. Really look at it. Maybe there's a gift for you. What might that gift? Just allow this natural beauty to fill you up, to fill your soul, to replenish you, to heal you. It simply means to bring you back to wholeness. Feel the peace in your heart as this green nature nourishment fills up your heart center and radiates out from you. And our affirmation for tonight Allow the words to just filter into your being. I take time to pause, breathe, and recenter. I take time to pause, breathe. And recenter. Breathe that in. I'll say it once more as an intention for this week. Breathing in and exhaling. I take time to pause, breathe, and recenter. We can thank the forest and the trees and this beautiful abundant planet that we live on and this beautiful group of souls that gather on a Sunday and Facebook for allowing us to do this. We give thanks for that and the technical ability for us to actually have this call give gratitude for that too. And a long, beautiful breath in. And a releasing breath out. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Thank did you. Did you go back into the forest? I did. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> that was really beautiful. So, um, just to repeat this week's affirmation, I take time to pause, breathe, and recenter. 
we don't have a card so I'm not going to post that up on the on the Facebook as I normally do but maybe I'll type it out and put it out yeah there. we can do that yeah I can mm. do that I'll put that there thanks everyone and next Sunday we won't be having Sunday night satsang because it's someone's birthday mm. and uh, yeah so we, we we're doing something <laughs> special on next Sunday for ourselves so we won't be joining you next Sunday with satsang but the following week we will yeah. So thank you for joining us tonight. We love you very much. And thank you for sharing your life, your light and life uh, with the world tonight. Thank you. God Thanks, bless. Thanks, everyone. Love you lots. Lots of love.